all kinds of little tricks to not have to eat the good stuff that makes them strong and gives them the vitamins and minerals they need. Uh-oh. So, what do we see? Is that the Lord is aware what his people need and through the true shepherds, he gives them that. So he's saying, I'm going to punish these false shepherds. So all we can say is, Lord, bring more rain of your wrath. Amen? Ask of the Lord rain. Okay, then it says about the cornerstone, and then it says, and they shall be like mighty men treading down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight because the Lord is with them and the oppressors, riders on horses, shall be confounded and put to shame. Now we are seeing that, that the Lord is doing that. That the Lord is fighting the oppressors. Okay? That the Lord is saying no more oppression. I'm going to do away with you. And we need to rejoice for that. When God lifts oppression or brings oppression down that is ruled over us, we need to be thankful for that. We don't need to mourn and weep and say, God, bring back the oppressor. We need to rejoice when God has delivered us of oppression. And we need to be thankful unto him because it is him who cuts off, who brings down, who tramples the oppressors. Because here it's saying, and they shall be like mighty men treading down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight because the Lord is with them and... The oppressors, riders on horses, shall be confounded and put to shame. So when God shames the oppressors, we need to thank God. Then it says, and, it will, and I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, Ephraim. And I will bring them back and cause them to dwell securely, for I have mercy, loving kindness, and compassion for them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. So basically what the Lord is doing is he is bringing his people out from under the falsehood reign, R-E-I-G-N, of the false shepherds. So in saying this, it is a great promise, it is a beautiful promise, and it is a display of God's what? His mercy, loving kindness, and compassion. Because he says, for I have mercy, loving kindness, and compassion for them. Then it says, then Ephraim, in verse 7, the ten tribes shall become like a mighty warrior, and their hearts shall re rejoice as through wine. Yes, their children shall see it and rejoice. Their hearts shall feel great delight and glory triumphantly in the Lord. So what is he saying? He's saying where he is showing this loving kindness, mercy, and compassion, there's going to be an outpouring of great joy. There's going to be thanksgiving. There's going to be gladness. In other words, there's going to be an exuberance that comes after the mercy reign of God. Because you know and I know in this dry land that we live in, when those rains come, I mean Everything springs to life. You'll see ducks you didn't even know existed. I remember when we lived in southern New Mexico and it's so hot there in the summer you can literally fry your eggs right on the pavement. I mean that's how bad it is. And they will sizzle. That's the heat that's there. We saw one year that the blacktop just bubbled up from the road because it was so hot. The whatever they had spread on the highway, it just was up in bubbles and up like this because of the heat that was coming down and coming up. And it, it's unbearable. When you get a rain there, you can't believe it. What happens? There's no ducks around there. All of a sudden, there's ducks. Your yard, you'll look out in the yard and there's where there's big old puddles. There'll be ducks out on those puddles, swimming and just having a good old time and you know, really enjoying themselves. You'll see frogs and they'll set up croaking and just singing. They're so happy because they've gotten the rain. And here in northern New Mexico, when that rain comes, you'll see the most exquisite, beautiful wildflowers. 
come up out of those old dry weeds and just say, hey, look at me and shine forth their glory and you just know it's God. You just know that nobody but God could have brought that beautiful, tender, fresh, new life out of all that old dry parched grass except God. Hmm? And out of that dust that looks like nothing will grow for the next 10,000 years that God does that. And it's, it's just like a marvelous transformation. Now people that live in, in regions where there's rain all the time, they don't see this. But I always said when God brought me to the Southwest that it reminded me of the land where Jesus was, even though I've never been to Israel. It just reminded me that God wanted us to know what it's like to really ask for the rain and then see the results of it. And I'm talking about spiritly, that God can bring up the fresh, beautiful, lovely, new shoots of life, glorious little flowers that are so pleasant to behold, that are so sweet to smell, and that are just an array of God's beauty out of nowhere, out of nothing, out of the depth of all that old dry weeds out there. And God does that. And you know that's exactly what God can do in the spirit. He can bring forth new hope. He can bring forth new life. He can bring forth glorious fragrances and beauty and elegance and just things that are magnificent to behold. Because of what? Because of his spirit reign. So when God is saying, ask for the rain, that's exactly what he wants us to do. Because number one, he's going to bring that rain for wrath and he's going to bring that rain for mercy. And if we are on the mercy side of God, we are going to be able to rejoice in every tender drop of rain that he brings forth. And we are going to be able to behold those crystal waters of life and know that it is the gift of God, you see. But when we are under the wrath because of rebellion, then that rain is going to be cruelty to us. And it's going to be hardship to us. And it's going to be despair but it's because of our choosing in opposition to God. So why are we supposed to ask for the rain? Because God wants to bring that rain. And God is displaying that rain. And God is exhibiting that rain. Now, you know, you can hear of all kinds of natural disasters that God keeps raining down upon this land and upon other nations throughout the earth. And those are the judgments of God. Those are the ventilations of his wrath, fury, and indignation. But at the same time, for those who are paying heed to God and desiring God, he is bringing the gathering in of that which is his. Just like he's saying here, that he's going to bring. It says, that then the E from the ten tribes shall become like a mighty warrior, and their hearts shall rejoice as through wine. And he says, and their uh, children shall see it and rejoice, their hearts shall Feel great delight and glory triumphantly in the Lord. And he says, I will hiss for them. As the keeper does for his bees. And gather them in. For I have redeemed them. And they shall increase again as they have increased before in Egypt. And though I sow them among the nations. Yet they shall earnestly remember me in far countries. And with their children they shall live and shall return. To the Lord and the land he gave them. And I will bring them all Israel home again. From the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria. And he says and I will bring them into the land on the east and on the west of the Jordan. Into Gilead and Lebanon and Rumina shall not be found for them. And it says and the Lord will pass through the sea of distress and affliction. At the head of his people as he did at the Red Sea. And he will smite down the waves of the sea and all the depths of the river Nile shall be dried up and put to shame. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter or rod of the taskmasters of Egypt shall pass away. And I will strengthen Israel in the Lord and they shall walk up and down and glory in his name, says the Lord. So, we can see that God has his purposes in his reign and when he tells his people to ask the Lord for the rain, that's exactly what we are meant to do. We are meant to continue to cry out unto God, to beseech God, to bring forth the rain of his wrath, his fury, his indignation, and not shy away from that petition. Because it is needful that the oppressors be brought down, that the wicked be cut off, 
that the evildoers be punished and that the rebellious be shown the error of their way. And it is God that does that through the ventilation of his anger, through the ventilation of his wrath and his fury revealed. Now, too many are squeamish when it comes to the things of God. Are you hearing me? They are squeamish. They only want to know that God will give mercy and truth and life. They do not want to know that God will punish and God will bring his fury and God will bring his wrath and God will vindicate himself. But if we're truly following God, then we are going to move with the moods of God. And there is the blessing reign and there is the wrathful reign and we are meant to realize that when God gives us the command to ask for that rain, it is because he is gathering and it is because he is bringing forth and it is because he is giving unto men that which they've given unto him. Now if I live for God supposedly in rebellion, in resentment, in hatefulness, God is not honored by that. God is disturbed by that and God has every right to put me under the punishment of his judgment reign. But if I have lived for God with thanksgiving and trust, with gladness and rejoicing, then God has every right to put me under the mercy of his reign. In other words, that I may flourish, that I may bring forth new life, that I may be abundant in him, that I may be glad, that I may be rejoicing, that I may be enjoying the fragrance after the rain. See? So what we have to know and understand and realize is that our God is true, that he's just, and all of his ways are perfect. And we don't need to get ourselves in a big workup as to the way that God wants things done. We just need to learn to cooperate with God. And if God says, ask for the rain, then do it. And see what God brings forth. Now we are in a time when God is evidently bringing forth his wrath, his fury, his indignation. There are many who have chosen spiritual blindness and refuse to even see that. But he's doing it nonetheless. It is also a time when God is gathering his true sheep, his true lamb, unto himself. He is gathering his sons and daughters that they may glorify him. And God is not going to abandon his true people to the wrath because it is not prepared for them. He is going to abandon them to the mercy because that is the cup that he has in preparation. So if we are truly his, we will ask for that rain and see what our God does. In ask rain in the season of the spring rain from the Lord who makes the storm clouds and he will give them showers of rain to everyone, the vegetation in the field. For the household gods utter nonsense and the diviners see lies. They tell false dreams and give empty consolation. Therefore the people wander like sheep. They are afflicted for lack of a shepherd. My anger is hot against the shepherds, and I will punish the leaders. For the Lord of hosts cares for his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them like his majestic steed in battle. From him shall come the cornerstone, from him the tent peg, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler, all of them together. They shall be like mighty men in battle, trampling the foe in the mud of the streets. They shall fight because the Lord is with them, and they shall put to shame the riders on horses. I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph. I will bring them back because I have compassion on them, and they shall be as though I had not rejected them. For I am the Lord their God, and I will answer them. Then Ephraim shall become like a mighty warrior, and their hearts shall be glad as with wine. Their children shall see it and be glad. Their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord. I will whistle for them and gather them in, for I have redeemed them. And they shall be as many as they were before. Though I scattered them among the nations, yet in far countries they shall remember me. And with their children they shall live and return. I will bring them home from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria and I will bring them to the land of Gilead and to Lebanon till there is no room for them. He shall pass through the sea of troubles and strike down the waves of the sea and all the depths of the Nile shall be dried up. The pride of Assyria shall be laid low and the scepter of Egypt shall depart. I will make them strong in the Lord and they shall walk in his name, declares the Lord. Everything is gone. Everything is gone, but, but the important things weren't live.
Now another massive relief effort is underway as hundreds of homes have been lost and lives torn apart in just one afternoon. I came out and I saw the cars and I saw the houses and I just started crying so hard. 